Welcome back to the Crypto World Channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, this massive warning signal is still flashing on the Bitcoin chart while the price is still breaking to the downside in the short term. But with that being said, we're still seeing a massive amount of liquidity build to the upside, which I'll talk about in just a moment. While Ethereum is now bouncing from critical short term support alongside Solana, also bouncing from critical short term support. So I'll be talking about all of that and more later in this video. So definitely watch to the end. First of all, just before getting into the Bitcoin charts today, quickly reminding you that there's only around five days to go until the Bitcoin halving. And in case you're new to all of this, the Bitcoin halving is an event that happens only once every four years. And essentially, the Bitcoin halving cuts the new inflation, the new Bitcoin coming into the supply, it cuts that in half. So it basically reduces the amount of Bitcoin coming into the Bitcoin supply, into circulation, which basically means the Bitcoin miners that are getting that Bitcoin as a reward for mining Bitcoin, they have less Bitcoin to sell after the halving, which is bullish. And historically speaking, the Bitcoin halving has always happened right before a one year bull market. Usually we see roughly around a year worth of Bitcoin bull market with Bitcoin going much higher in price, roughly one year following the Bitcoin halving. And so despite what happens in the shorter term on smaller time frames, obviously in the short term, we can see bullish or bearish price action. But when we're zooming out, looking at the bigger picture, what we could expect in the coming months or over the next one year, we are still technically looking extremely bullish based around the Bitcoin halving and based on Bitcoin's history. And if we're taking a look at this weekly Bitcoin chart, we can take a look at the last time where we saw the last Bitcoin halving back in May 2020 and what happened next over the next few months, over the next one year or so. But I talked more about this chart right here in my last video here on the channel. So if you're new to the channel and you want to know more about this chart to save myself repeating the same information, check out my last video here on the channel. And the same can be said about this Bitcoin chart on the three day time frame, because over the last one day, not much has really changed on this chart. And so at least as of right now, from the all time high level to the current local low in the price of Bitcoin, we've currently pulled back roughly around 18% from high to low. And so at least for now, this is a very standard pullback that we've actually seen multiple times throughout this very bull market. And so even if we see a 20, 25, or even a 30% correction from high to low, that's actually very normal price action to see even during a bullish market or a larger bullish trend. And so that's why I always say it's important to understand the difference between the different time frames. Obviously, on the larger time frames, looking at the bigger picture, the longer term, we can still be looking very bullish when we're talking about the longer term. But of course, on smaller time frames, looking at the more shorter term, we can be looking more bearish in the short term while remaining bullish on the longer term because those are different time frames. And of course, one of the reasons as to why we've seen more bearish price action recently here in the price of Bitcoin, one of those reasons is due to the fact that the DXY has been massively spiking to the upside and has been doing that over the last few weeks. And so this is exactly what I've been talking about already over the last few weeks here on the channel. Once again, when the DXY is bullish, it's going to be very difficult to see any significant bullish price action for Bitcoin because we can see here on the chart that usually when the DXY is bullish, we see Bitcoin either relatively neutral, if not bearish. And the most bullish price action that we see for Bitcoin almost always happens when the DXY is actually bearish. And so as always, I'll be keeping a close eye on the DXY right now. And as always, I'll be keeping you up to date in these daily update videos here on the channel. So make sure you subscribe to this channel with notifications turned on so that you don't miss out on any of these important update videos. And if we're staying on the daily time frame, of course, over the last couple of days, we've seen this break to the downside below this ascending line of support. As I mentioned in my last video, that line of support, by the way, was sitting close to 67,000. And so now that we've already broken to the downside below that line of support, once again, as I said yesterday, that technically activates a technical price target to the downside, which is sitting at around $55,000. But between the current price and that technical price target, there is this area of support right here based on these previous lows sitting at roughly around 61 to 62,000. And so just to keep that in mind, it is possible for the price of Bitcoin to turn around at that area of support if there's enough buyers in that area. But basically, if we start breaking below around $60,000 with confirmation, then it becomes extremely likely that we'll continue down towards around $55,000 if we first confirm a break below $60,000. 
And as for my trading strategy right now, I'm still currently slowly accumulating a position for the next swing to the upside in the larger bullish market. This is a longer term, low leverage position. And so of course that is different from a short term position. Obviously if I was trading a smaller time frame, I'd potentially look at a short position with this break to the downside. But as I've been saying recently here on the channel, I do ultimately expect the continuation of the larger bullish market at some point in the future. And whether that's gonna happen right now or after a little bit more of a pullback, either way, I'm very flexible in that trade. Because essentially, if the price of Bitcoin just goes further to the downside, I have more buy orders to the downside, accumulating a larger position at lower prices. And so essentially, just based on my trading strategy right now, it doesn't matter if the price goes up or down from here, just for as long as that at some point in the future, we see a bounce and a recovery, whether it's right now or at a lower price. Once again, that does not matter. What matters is that we eventually see a bounce and recovery, no matter where that's from. And if you want to trade these moves in the price of Bitcoin or any other crypto, personally, I take trades just like that over on Bybit. So I'll make sure to leave a link to Bybit down below this video in the description and in the pinned comment. And in fact, if you use that link down below this video to make a Bybit account and deposit on that account, you can get up to a $30,000 deposit bonus, but only if you use that link down below this video. And also, if you use that link, it'll take you to this page right here, where you can claim an exclusive 200 USDT airdrop position. And so if you're going to be trading crypto anyway, you might as well check this out. Once again, first link down below this video to claim this free airdrop and get those extra bonuses if you want to. But for whatever reason, if you cannot access Bybit or if you cannot KYC on Bybit, there is also Bitflex, which is another crypto exchange similar to Bybit, but you don't need KYC for Bitflex. And so I'll also make sure to leave a link to Bitflex down below this video as an alternative crypto exchange as well. But anyway, if we're zooming into the short term, looking at the four hour time frame, obviously over the last one day, we saw a bounce back to the upside and now we're actually rejecting, at least in the imminent short term, from this previous area of support, which is now acting as new resistance. And that area of short-term resistance right now is sitting in between around 65 to 66,000. And even if we see a breakout back above $66,000, we also have this area of resistance sitting in between around 68 to 69,000. And as for short-term support right now, as I said earlier, we have this area of support based on these previous lows sitting in between around 61 to 62,000 approximately. And if we're taking a quick look at the Bitcoin liquidation heat map, we can see a massive amount of liquidity still building to the upside at roughly around 71.6K to 71.9K. And so basically just below $72,000, there's a lot of short positions that would get liquidated once the Bitcoin price actually hits those levels. And historically speaking, usually the price of Bitcoin moves towards where there's most liquidity. So keep that in mind, there's billions of dollars of liquidity sitting just underneath 72,000. And so potentially if we start to see some bullish signals, like for example, a bit of a reversal in the DXY, then a signal like that combined with potentially other bullish signals could result in a slight recovery in the short term, potentially to take out that liquidity just underneath 72,000. But once again, we ideally need to see a few other bullish signals, not just rely on one chart by itself, which is why I cover multiple charts and indicators here in these videos. So we can take a look at everything and figure out if we're looking more bearish or more bullish on different timeframes. And if we're taking a quick look at the Bitcoin funding rates and the funding rates for a lot of other altcoins across multiple different exchanges, we can see right now, and as I said in my last video, these funding rates are currently sitting in the negative territories for a lot of exchanges. And this is the first time in a long time that we have seen negative funding rates because usually during a bullish market, it's very rare to see negative funding rates because basically when we're seeing negative funding rates, that means a lot of traders out there are trying to short the market right now and not a lot of people are trying to long the market right now. And so basically what this actually means for the market is the short positions have to pay these funding rates as a fee, a regular fee to the long positions. And so for example, right now, if the funding rate is negative on one of these coins on one of these exchanges, and if you're holding a long position for that coin on that exchange, then you're essentially earning fees from the short positions. The short positions are having to pay fees to the long positions. 
And basically, the more negative the funding rates go, the more fees the shorts have to pay the longs, so the more expensive it becomes to hold and maintain short positions. And so basically, if we see the funding rates go further and further into negative territory, this is going to push people to potentially close short positions and potentially open long positions. And when you do that, when you close a short position or open a long position, that adds buying pressure to the market. So just keep that in mind. Right now, funding rates are sitting in negative territories. But with that being said, getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this is on the weekly time frame, and right now we're finding support pretty much exactly at 2.9k, which is a level I've mentioned over and over again here on the channel. Because basically for the last few weeks, I've already warned that the moment we see a break below around 3.4k, expect a move from 3.4k basically straight down towards 2.9k if we break 3.4k, which is exactly what has happened just here. And so for now, 2.9k is the level to watch, but if we break below 2.9k with confirmation, then the next significant level of support on the weekly time frame is sitting at around 2.4 to 2.5k. But anyway, taking a look at this 12 hour ETH to US dollar chart, and over the last one day, the 12 hour Ethereum RSI got extremely close to oversold territories. We basically brushed against oversold territories on the 12 hour time frame. And the last couple of times where the 12 hour Ethereum RSI entered into oversold territories, those both occurred during some sort of local low in the price just before we saw at least a short term bounce back to the upside. And so, once again, this signal by itself does not guarantee that we're definitely at the bottom and we're going to see a massive recovery now. Basically, what it simply means is that we've kind of reached the lower limit. We could go a little bit lower because it didn't actually fully enter into oversold territories. But basically, when the RSI starts entering into oversold territories, it means that we're kind of reaching that lower short-term limit, at least relative to the time frame. And so in those situations, we are due to see either at least a sideways consolidation or usually a slight bounce back to the upside to help to reset the RSI. Sorry. And if we're zooming further into the short term, looking at the six hour time frame, right now we're bouncing from this critical area of support based on previous supports here in the price, and that's sitting in between around 28.50 to 29.50. And as for short term resistance, we do have some resistance right around here at around 3.1K based on previous support, and more resistance in between 3.2K to 32.50. And so, at least in the short term, those are the levels to watch as of right now. And as for Solana, on the six hour time frame, we're seeing something very similar. Obviously, over the last one day, we have seen a bounce in the short term in the price of Solana from the local low from this area of support sitting in between around 120 to 127. And as for short term resistance, we are now running into this previous area of support now acting as new resistance sitting in between around 143 to around 149. But even if we see a breakout back above around $150, even in that case, we still have this area of previous support, which should now act as new resistance, sitting at around 167 to 172. And once again, if you want to trade these moves in the price of any crypto, check out those links down below this video if you want to claim those extra bonuses. And if you want to actually know how to trade crypto, no matter if the price is bullish, bearish, or chopping around sideways, you can profit from all of that price action by watching these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how you can profit from bullish or bearish price action using long positions or short positions, and the video in the bottom left shows you how you can easily profit from choppy sideways price action. But anyway, that is everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.